from the hundreds where a frog got his fucking tongue And I'm from the hundreds where K-Dog was a fucking dog And I'm from the hundreds where a pops got his fucking pop And I'm from the hundreds where a fool was a fucking fool And I'm from the hundreds, Rosemore, Roseland, West Pullman And I'm from the hundreds, so you know how we do it I truly appreciate everybody rocking out with the platform, Flaco Santana TV Hit that like, subscribe, share, buddy, and you already know I'm coming at the end of the day. Raw, official content, never seen, never heard. I just hit my 5,000 uh, subscriber. Shout out to my supporters. I just had 80,000 views this month. Shout out to my supporters. Real talk, y'all, my motivation. Straight up. With that being said, you know, you see all these different projects. The Icky, Dead Born Home, Stateway, you know, Henry Hornets. Robert Taylor projects, they are notorious, they all have uh, stories and legends, you know, within them that have to be told, and one day I'm going to get into those stories of those uh, projects, real talk, straight up, but right now we finna focus on, you know, one of the most notorious projects throughout the country, you know what I'm saying, not just in Chicago, but the country, you know what I'm saying, I really could say in the world, you know, like real talk, uh, Cabrini Greens, straight up, you know what I'm saying, and the Greens have uh, legends and, and you know, so many different stories, you know, that come out of them, you know, real talk, and we finna get it to them legends, but I just wanna, you know, give y'all a little background on the Greens. See, the Greens was formed, like, they they got uh, formed, they got built, I should say, in, like, 1942. 1942, you had the Chicago Housing Authority, and they built, you know, uh, a portion of the Greens, you know, just, like, 55 buildings, you know, just for, you know, World War II veterans. So, in 1949... You had the CHA getting more money from the government. And that was called the American Housing Act. So they kept building more buildings. In 1962, that's the completion of the Greens. That when you get the high rises, like 23 buildings, 15, 16 stories, you got all, everything completed. But in 1966, you had a sister named Dorothy, and she stayed in my hood in the hundreds, right? Argyle Gardens, and she was a black sister, and she went and filed a lawsuit against the Chicago Housing Authority saying they was racist. So that is how you got a lot of blacks who moved in the projects. Like I said, that was 1966. The sister won the case against the CHA, and that's how blacks got into the projects, real talk. Do your homework, do your research. With that being said, you know, the Greens, you know, uh, the Cabrini Greens, they got a lot of rich history in them. The good, the bad, the ugly, right? You know, but one part of, you know, its history is the same gangsters. That's where it was founded. That's where it was started. That's where the concept came from. You feel me? This is where the original you know, insane, you know what I'm saying, came together and said, hey, we finna do it like this and do it like that, you know, like real talk, straight up. BGD was started way before insane. So I just want to put that out there, you know what I'm saying, 1969 is when uh, David, King David, you know what I'm saying, and Larry Hoover came together and they put it together to form BGD 1969. The insane concept didn't come into effect late, late 70s. So understand that the insanes came about because you had brothers who was BGD and they were saying 
we insane about BGD saying, hey, we we the most insane, we the most gangster, we the most toughest. You feel me? That was the concept behind insane. Real talk. And Don Smokey, him being older than a lot of brothers, him being locked up since he was nine years old, him him being right hand man uh Richard Strong. I told you Smokey was Richard Strong right hand man. So you could just imagine if Richard Strong, you know, was the chief of the devil disciples and Don Smokey was with Richard Strong at a young age, that lets you know what type of individual Smokey was. Real talk. So Smokey got locked up a lot. So when the insane thing was going on and it was just blowing and everybody becoming part of it and a lot of uh, delegating had to be done, Smokey was on the inside. He was the face for insane, you know, because he's from the north side and ain't a lot of north side brothers up in there, you know, who got the recognition like he do. Like I say, he, you know, you look at his rap sheet, you know, murders and and, and all type of stuff. He was just a gangster uh, brother. Like, that what he was known for. He wasn't known for being nice. He wasn't known for being compassionate. You know, uh, when it came down to the business, he was uh, very cold-hearted. You know what I'm saying? And this the way he was coming. Real talk. So when brothers get locked up and they from the greens, they from the north side, you know, a brother asks you, hey, uh, you know Smokey, yeah, we know Smokey, yeah, we real Smokey, yeah, Smokey, Smokey, yeah, they're going to rock out with Smokey. Because he was notorious and he, he made a name for himself. Real talk. So understand that part. But so while he on the inside, you got a brother uh, by the name of Don Bojan. He on the outside. Don Bojan. Charismatic brother. Everybody uh, rocked out with him. You know what I'm saying? Don Bojan, right here in the picture with Don Smokey. Mind you, Don, at them times, you know, in the BGD times, those was the highest titles that somebody could, you know, uh, have, you know, like real talk. Unless you the king, you know what I'm saying? But that's why I said, like, for those who wasn't kings and things of that nature, the highest, you know, was done. So, like I say, you had done. Bojan and Don Bojan, he was a monumental individual when it comes down to insane because you have to understand that you had different cliques within Cabrini. You know what I'm saying? You had insanes, but you also had imperial gangsters too. Real talk. You had different, co so that's why Don Bojan was so important, and I'm going to get to that. So you see, it's different uh, buildings in the greens, you know, uh, different names. You know, everybody had their own building, had their own name, like 30 Block, 630 West Evergreen, you know, the big O. 660 West Division, the Gold Man, 714 West Division, you know what I'm saying, the Jude, 534 West Division, the Carter, 624, 1340 now, uh, North Larrabee, you feel me? They had, they had, hey, look, all these buildings had their own, you know, motion, real talk, straight up. So you, we just seen the whites, then you go to the red buildings. You know what I'm saying? 
So when you hear me say the whites or the reds, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? You got 1159 through 1161. You know, North Larrabee, 61 Max, the Boulevard, 1015 through 1017 Larrabee. You feel me? Call that one. Oh, this building, Bank Row, 500, 502 West Oak. You feel me? They all had different names. Straight up. And, you know, the Greens is a legendary spike. I'm talking about they didn't make TV shows movies, all type of things about the uh, the Greens, like real talk. I mean, this is a classic movie right here, Cooley High. You know, Cooley High is based off of Cooley High School that really exists on the north side. You know, they based everything off the Greens about brothers uh, going to high school, straight up. And this was a classic movie that's still watched to this day. I'm very sure y'all know know them faces. I know y'all done seen them in many movies before. You know what I'm saying? Like real talk. Straight up. <laughs> Bro, uh, right there, he played uh, Tina Turner, husband, right? And Ike, a Tina Turner movie. Then the other brother, he been in so many. They both been in a lot of movies, but the other brother, he was in uh, Different World. You know what I'm saying? He was in a lot of different things. You know what I'm saying? So y'all go ahead and check out uh, Cooley High real quick. I put a little uh, snippet. Damn, man. I can't never remember none of these names and dates. The Emancipation Proclamation, 1776. Uh, 1862, dummy. Hey, put that away. Let's go to the movies. Yeah, Chief, let's go, go to the movies, man. It's Jeffrey. Who you think it is? What you want now, man? Damn, Jeffrey. I want my basketball. Forget it. Get out of here and quit running back and forth. This is my room. I could come in my room anytime I want. Hey, man, how are we supposed to get any studying done like this? I told you we should have went to my house, man. Ain't nobody never in my house. Man. Oh, man. Get out of here. Get out of here. Man, your damn brother's a pain in the ass. Damn, man. He's more trouble than all my brothers and sisters put together. No Don't lie. worry about it. He ain't gonna bother us. Look out! See, I told you. You know, go check out Cooley High if you ain't seen it. Real talk. But they didn't did uh, movies. Uh, Candyman. You know, that, that's a famous movie, Candyman. You know, uh, Good Times. Real talk. Now, everybody know Good Times. People still watching Good Times to this day. That's why I said these are classics. Straight up. Real talk. So... If you watch Good Times, you're going to see the intro is going to show you the greens. Real talk. It's based off of Cabrini Greens. Check it out. Well, who have we here? <laughs> Aren't you a sweet little pumpkin face? Hey, Mama, you ask him for it. Gary, maybe you should... Flo, Flo, let sweet little Gary say hello to the nice lady. <laughs> Gary, my name is Miss Forbes, and I just may be your brand new bus driver. Well, bus driver you may be, but brand new you ain't. <laughs> Funny little fellow. <laughs> oh, fresh blood. Uh, Pay attention, totem pole, you might learn something. <laughs> Gary. Don't worry, Mama, there's nothing to it. We won't even make you pick up the ants. Ants? Yeah, my friend Chester Hill got mad at our last bus driver and threw his ant farm at him. No, Gary. It's okay now. They're almost gone. Oh. It was my idea to bring in the spiders. Spiders? They love ants. Oh. Oh. Mama, what is your problem? <laughs> this is like talking to a yo-yo. Now, you. I told you not to. They just baby spiders anyway. Like the one on your arm. My arm? Hold your leg. Hold on, it's in your head. I get it.
All right, so rest in peace to Gary Coleman, At the Rose, John Amos, um, all them, you know, who passed away from that classic TV show that was based off of Cabrini Greens. Like, real talk, it was based off people, you know, black family that lived in Cabrini Greens. You know, it shows the dynamics, uh, gave you different situations, just, you know, how black families living in those projects. But you see right here, you see Fat Joe. Fat Joe, he from the Bronx. He from New York. He came all the way from New York to the Greens. You feel me? Straight up. You see Gator Bradley right here. You see the brother uh, who got him locked, who's stacking him. His name is P. Keller. P. Keller got an excellent book called The... Cabrini Green Chronicles of Pete Keller. He doing a lot of good things in the community. But next to him, who do you see? Mr. Scarface himself. You feel me? Straight up, Scarface. All type of actors and movie stars and entertainers been up in, you know, the Greens and, and Cabrini. So now let's get to the, you know, the history. Right here... You got a brother, he didn't start in Sings or anything like that, but he had a part to play. You know, not in the formation of in Sings, but just him being in the greens, he got to be spoke about. His name is Richard Champ Strong. He was a, a chief of the Devil Disciples, that's a fact. This picture right here was taken in 1969, May 4th. Real talk. This brother right here, he started his own crew. But, you know, he had to pass it on, though, know, you know, uh, his authority to King David, you know, when he left. You know, the South Side, he gave it to David as far as, you know, authority. Hey, look, I'm out of here. I'm finna go up north. You got it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Do what it do. I'm finna go slide to the north side type. You feel me? So, he bust one of those moves. He slid to the north side. You know, he from the south side. Y'all hit that subscribe button. Let's get it. Like, share, all that. So, go to the north side. And he started a, a squad. You know, he started a crew. Called the Black Family Deuces. Now you see it say right here, 1969, police mug shot, taken from Cabrini Green Area Police of Richard Strong, the first chief, the first chief of the disciples. So he was the leader of the devil disciples before King David. This was the chief of the devil disciples. Real talk. He passed his authority on to King David. Started the Black Family Deuces in Cabrini Green. And mind you, that picture, he, it was taken in, taken in 1969. 1969 is the year that Larry Hoover and King David came together to form BGD when GDs and BDs came together. Keep that in mind. So Don Smokey, many people don't know this, but Don Smokey was Richard Strong's right-hand man. Richard Strong got killed, and I might go into that story one day. But Richard Strong got killed. Don Smokey took charge like he normally do. Gangster amongst gangsters. You know, he the Don, you know how he moving, how he coming. So, he bust his move. Mind you, Don Smokey been locked up or going back and forth to jail since nine years old. He got a long rap sheet. He notorious for uh, many different things. I mean, from murders to... You name it, he didn't done it. Just keeping it real. No nonsense type of guy. 
He don't play when it come down to the business. But, like I said, he was in and out of jail. So, a lot of times, when it came to the insane thing on the streets, this brother you see with Don Smokey right here, why Don Smokey locked up, his name is Don Bojan. Don Bojan was a gangster as well. You feel me? Him and Don Smokey was ace coon booms rocking out with each other like you know like the long way they really rocked out with each other you see this brother didn't visit don smokey while he's in jail so you had don bojan and this brother right here was very influential in the community straight up everybody rocked out with him real talk this brother played a major part because like i said smokey was on the inside and he was making a name on the inside you know from being who he is but also because he's from the north side it's not a lot of north side dudes you know at that time inside the prison system you know what i'm saying and you know especially uh guys like smokey so when you go up in there and you say you're from the north side they go hey smokey yeah hey y'all with smokey yeah you feel me but don bojan he was the individual who brought everybody together because he was charismatic he had that type of you know what i'm saying that that vibe and I'm finna show y'all, you know what I'm saying, where it all went down at. But you see Smokey, he up there, you know, with Larry Hoover, uh, Damati, Bobby Gore. You got the Lords and the folks together. You got the heads uh, coming together. Uh, you see Smokey right there. So that lets you know, Smokey has some juice. He, he has some authority. Brothers recognize how he coming. He right there. And they call they self the Universal Brothers. Universal Brothers of Statesville. They was all together. They go another picture. A Smokey throwing up that one. Brother, the brother right there got his hand on the other brother's shoulder while he bend it down. And then you see what the picture's saying. Or what it, you know the the picture is, I should say. Like togetherness, like two hands together, like we together, like one. Straight up. But we finna get back to Don Bojan. Don Bojan. He the one who brought it together. He brought all the insanes together. Real talk. He didn't. He had a squad with him, you know. This Don Bojan right here with Jimmy Gray, some of the originals you see they stacking it. Real talk, the guys, man, the insanes. Like I say, insane wasn't started to go against BGD. In fact, they call themselves Black Insane Gangster Disciples. Straight up. In this picture, you got Big Gus, and I mean Big Gus, he held it down, you know what I'm saying, like real talk, he had a spot, you know, Big Gus, you know, they uh, actually they called him, like he kind of like the godfather, you feel me, real talk, but you got Big Gus in here, you got uh, Don Bojan, you got Bell up in here, you got Bobby Brown in here, uh, Jimmy Gray, I already told you about Jimmy Gray, but he held it down too, because he had a spot. You know what I'm saying? Uh, little June. Little June was known for taking, you know what I'm saying, this insane thing, uh, you know, around. You feel me? Nardo. So, you know, I just got to give it up to those. They're the originals. I got to mention Ragu, too. Big Ragu. He was, you know, original. So, you see it say right here. Right here on this very bench, we gathered to form an understanding. Don Bojan declared that we are one. One insane one family real talk i mean i'm gonna read the rest because it, it 
it says, it's a shame that we have forgotten that which bonded us to unity, bonded us for life. I'm going to just finish that out. Because that's real at the end of the day. Brothers and brothers then forget what the concept of insane was created for and what it was about. Insane, you know, was a security, like, that was like a security branch. You feel me? Because the insane was insane. You feel me? But after Don Bojan brought everybody together, you know, because he, hey, we all insane. Because you got to understand, you had Imperial Gangsters, you know, you had the Insanes, you had different crews, and everybody, you know, was trying to do their little one-two. Don Bojan could, was able to bring everybody together. And that's how everybody came one umbrella, Insane. Now, I was just showing y'all, like, pictures of different Insanes from different hoods and things of that nature because that's how it started spreading. When Don Bojan had that sit down with all the insanes and everybody's like, hey, we with it, let's get it. Don Bojan, he traveled to the Ickies. Straight up, he went to the Ickies and he put insanes in the Ickies. Real talk on 22nd Street. So there you go, boom. So I'm just showing y'all like how insane start traveling throughout the city you got insanes everywhere like real talk i'm saying everywhere far as spread out throughout the city different locations but it's not a lot of insane sets in chicago it's only a handful of original insane sets real talk you got little shorties be saying, hey, we insane. I ain't even heard uh brothers saying, hey, BD saying they insane. You know, like, but they going against the grain. They, they ain't going with the structure. So we're going to get into that when they saying insane. But you see right here, this little dark daddy right there. Real talk. He the man. And them dads, I mean, he's still the man because he didn't transition doing this thing, you know, as far as uh, being a Muslim. But you see him next to Shorty Dope. Shorty Dope throwing up the eye. Real talk. Then the brother who was next to him throwing up the eye. Then the brother next to him behind him, he throwing up the insane sign. You feel me? And Straight up, brothers was embracing that, that insane. That's what I'm saying. Like, brothers, brothers was embracing it. Them brothers from Inglewood. Straight up. The first eye was threw up on the north side. You got brothers in Inglewood throwing up the eye. Whereas the neighborhood festival at Cabrini Green, 911 North Hudson Avenue, on July 21st, we'll honor Elax Taylor for his community leadership. And whereas Elax Taylor has for many years been a resident of Cabrini Green, he is the founder of its teen club and has taken a leading role in neighborhood activities, engaging both youthful and older residents of this community. Well, uh, this started 20-some years ago. Uh, I looked at kids around here. They had nowhere to go and nothing to do. And when Harvey Peck, Mr. Harvey Peck, was the manager of Cabrini Green, I also went to him and asked him, could we use the basement? He said, yes, well, at this particular time, we got nothing around you. And so uh, he said we could use it. So I began to putting the kids together and letting them know that, well, you got to run this, not me. I'm going to be only down here to guide you and keep you out, of, out of, from the law and keep you from uh, breaking the law. They taking this responsibility, and from this one group, I go out, the other one come in. Therefore, is that we have never had, well, let's say it like this. We never had a cutting in the basement. We never had a shooting. We had a few fist fights, and that's, that's the biggest it went to fist fight. Because they realized that if they, close, if they fight down there, they raise the devil down there, well, they wouldn't have no place to go whatsoever when the wind are blowing, the snow are falling, and all of this. And so summertime, we also cuts it out, you know. Crime, police, can, uh, law cannot stop a crime. Can stop, they can't stop crime. Only thing can stop crime is, is programming. 
you must have programs in here to stop crime. Then they play itself. If you ain't got no program, you ain't you got it, you're gonna have crime. As we have mentioned before, today has been dedicated to uh, Mr. Elax Taylor. As you are probably all aware, especially those of you in the front row doing all the talking, Mr. Elax Taylor has worked in this community for more than 40 years. And all of you probably know that he's worked with all of us, helping us, struggling with us, helping us to cope with many of the problems that face growing up in an inner city. Throughout these many years, Mr. Taylor has always remained strong, determined, and dedicated. It is for that reason that today, this entire play lot is being dedicated to Mr. Elax Taylor. The tennis court that you see to the side. This is the first time that we had in the public attention, more public attention we ever had. And let's say this is the first time that we've been close enough to one of our leaders to be able to say it like Mayor Burns, that's, uh, that's as close as I've ever got to any of them. And I've worked in here for the last 30 some odd years doing the same thing. But she's the only one that showed any kind of initiative to was uh, uh, the communities. And this is what we are uh, trying to take the, uh, uh, the advantage of it and use it uh, the best that we can. Because uh, we have never been able to get a public official to take a look at us in here. Hey, who are we? We are the future women of Cabrini. Well, what do we want? We want a chance to be free. We want to walk. We want to talk. We want to stand tall. Because we are the future women of Cabrini. Hey, my name is LaShawn. My name is Aisha. My name is Ramona. My name is Raina. My name is Mika. We are the future women of Serena. So right here, you see Junior Hope. And I hope y'all enjoy what I just showed y'all. I just want to give y'all a taste of the greens, what's going on, get a vibe, you know what I'm saying? Like real talk, straight up. But right here is Junior Hope. And Junior Hope played a major part as far as creating something called the Coalition. And the coalition, if you haven't heard of it, it is the coming together of different Chicago organizations. You know, not even mattering if it's you under the five or the six, like everybody came together in the federal institution. Real talk. And it was based off of this brother right here, Junior Hope. If you seen my uh, interview with a little fool, do you heard him speak about that? You heard him speak about that. You heard him speak about the coalition. Real talk. Go check that interview out. Also, if you saw my white cloud documentary if you haven't go watch it i told y'all that junior hope had the north side and the west side at a period of time you see him right here with don smoky and don smoky sister straight up but junior hope had the north side and the west side white cloud had the south side and the east side This brother right here is Big Chuck. Big Chuck, he is an individual who has to be spoke of, on spoke on because he's a legend. Real talk, from the Greens, crazy crew. 
Everybody know Big Chuck, Crazy Crew. But did you know the Crazy Crew was formed out of the Insanes? Did you know Big Chuck was insane? That's a fact. Real talk. Big Chuck wasn't insane. So Junior Hope, and I'm and I'm I'm kind of going ahead because what I'm finna talk about because uh I haven't got into a you know a lot of things, but I'm gonna show you. But I had to show you Big Chuck because he's a legend. But me speaking on Junior Hope as well, I have to connect these dots because Junior Hope was getting in contact with Big Chuck and he trying to get Big Chuck to you know rock out with the movement and things of that nature Big Chuck was a gangster he was making money him and his crew they was doing what they do you know what I'm saying they were turning up Big Chuck had it on lock so you had Junior Hope who like I said had the North Side and see I'm going to get into how, you know, the line, the lineage go, you know, to get to Big Chuck. But I'm going to tell y'all this story now. So you got Big Chuck chopping it up with Junior Hope. Junior Hope trying to get at Big Chuck. Hey, look, you know, come come on in. You know, y'all, you got the greens on lock. You making money. Rock out with us. You know what I'm saying? Big Chuck really wasn't trying to hear Junior Hope. He wasn't he wasn't trying to hear Junior Hope. He hey, you know I'm doing what I do. You know what I'm saying? We crazy crew. You know, things of that nature. Straight up. You had a brother. I ain't going to say the brother's name, but you had a brother who was from the north side, and this brother used to have Big Chuck come see him. So, this brother right here, when Big Chuck come and see him, Larry Hoover is there. Now, I can't get you all the details of that conversation and things of that nature. But just know that Big Chuck was made a Batman, made a board member. Real talk. Now, right here is an article I want you to read. You know, real talk. It's a gang shooting net long prison term. Two Southside men were sentenced Friday to long prison terms and the killing of one man and an attempted murder of another in what prosecutors describe as an internal gang power struggle over drug territory. Vincent Galloway, 41, and Melvin Clifton, 27, appeared before Cook County Circuit Judge Marcus Salone who sentenced Galloway to 120 years in prison and Clifton to 80 years. Assistant State's Attorney Brian Sexton said Galloway and Clifton sought to step into a leadership vacuum in the Gangster Disciples by killing a fellow gang member who ran drugs operations in the city. Prosecutors said the defendant met with Leon Milkman Houghton, 45, and Eddie Brown, 39, in March 1996, and fatally shot Houghton in the neck. They said the gunman shot Brown several times. He survived and identified Galloway as the shooter. So understand what's going on. They say, what, 96? You got brothers getting locked up. 
indictments going on 95 96 everybody getting jammed up it's hot you know i told you about junior hope you know what i'm saying he did a state bid he got out you know he did what he did he went to the feds you know what i'm saying like i told you like you know uh it was a power vacuum everybody getting jammed up so you asked me hey flaco why you showing me about milkman who was from the east side and about him getting killed why because it just told you you know what i'm saying that it was a power struggle it was a vacuum it was a void that had to be filled up and big chuck he never got locked up on none of them indictments and things of that nature so you had brothers like big chuck who was a board member who had a position who was doing what he was uh, supposed to do you know you know just being him who got the greens on lock then you got milkman who from the east side you know what i'm saying doing what he do you know they both gangsters at the end of the day you know what i'm saying but you seen what the articles say y'all can read you know between the lines so you see what this article say right mind you big chuck got killed then milkman got killed right but it's a two recent slings have been tied directly to the internal struggle to take control of the gangster disciples. The January 8th slaying of Charles Big Chuck Dorsey, then considered the gang's highest ranking member. I told you he was a board member. He was not in prison in the March 10th killing of Leon Milkman Horton Jr., a top disciple leader. He was a board member too, but they both got killed. Authorities said the killings of four other gangster disciples last month were attributed to efforts by other gangs, particularly the Blackstones, to muscle in on the gangster disciple drug territory. One law enforcement source said two other victims were tied to gangster disciple leaders who were indicted as part of the federal probe. The source speculated that gangster disciples may have questioned their allegiance. Okay. So the bottom portion, that just adding on, you know, a little more detail so y'all can see the article. But the beginning of that article is letting you know it was an eternal beef. I just showed y'all two different articles. This is Milkman. Real talk. You know, I might do a story on him, but... I'm showing y'all how Chuck got killed. And the article is saying that it was a beef between Milkman and Chuck for power. They, bo they both was board members. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it was a void that had to be filled. It was an indictment. You know what I'm saying? When you had the Big 39 indictment, you know, uh, Larry Hoover included. You know, everybody got snatched up. And it was a void to be filled. Did you see what it's saying in the newspaper? So it's saying that Milkman had Big Chuck killed. And when Milkman had Big Chuck killed, Milkman got killed. Real talk. Straight up. So that's what happened to the legend of Big Chuck. I'm moving kind of fast because I haven't even shown what happened to Don Bojan and, and things of that nature. But, you know, I want to get into that so y'all can understand that the way that Big Chuck died. Real talk. And Big Chuck wasn't insane. That was his foundation. Straight up. Real talk. You know, uh, these are pictures of the inside of the green. You know, uh, it's real in the Cabrini, straight up. That's why I say it was a notorious project, not just known around the country, but the world. You know, the world seen and heard about the snipers on top of buildings and, you know, the gang violence and things of that nature. I mean, Cabrini Green really had a lot of gangster brothers up in there like in the, them days and times you know what i'm saying 
the environment was real, boy. It was real. Straight up. Like I said, you had the uh, Egyptian cobras uh, beefing with the folks, you know what I'm saying, with the guys, you know what I'm saying. Uh, I mean, the Egyptian cobras, they always been in the green. They started off Egyptian cobras, then they went to Cobra Stone, and, you know, Mickey Caldwell got killed, and some of them didn't go uh, Cobra Stone. They went Mickey Cobra, you know what I'm saying, but, you know, after the Cobra st uh, stone, stone thing, they went just to Black Stones. You know what I'm saying? Like real talk. You got Black Stones up north. You definitely do. Straight up. So, uh, understand that it was real. I remember uh, a story of Don Bojan saying, hey, he telling the insanes, hey, y'all go up in the crib. Y'all go and be in a be in the house. Go in the house. Stay in the house. Don't come out till a certain time. Or don't come out till the next day. You know what I'm saying? It was something like that. But brothers say, man, they come outside. It was like ten uh cobra stones did. Real talk. So hey, Bojan told them to go in the crib, don't come out till a certain time. They come back outside the crib. Cobra Stone's bodies everywhere. And at that point, that's when the insanes took over the greens. For real, real talk. That's history. That's definitely history. So right here, you got King Shorty. You know... Of course, you got King David, you know what I'm saying? But after King David died, rest in peace, you know, the appointed king was King David. He got appointed by the Black Disciple Nation. After the split, after they, they wanted their own king, he got appointed, right? So he got appointed to be the king, but you see him, you know, locking the gates, you know, with Cadillac Joe, who is third in command of the kings, Latin kings, real talk. You know, King Shorty was well respected, well respected, you know, throughout the city, throughout the country. It was a lot of people he touched, you know, that knew him, like real talk, straight up. BDs everywhere, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, a lot of BDs screaming at KSK. Real talk. So, so I understand that, you know, King Shorty was a very influential man. You know, that's a picture of him right here. You got CP, you know what I'm saying, with him. Straight up. You got King Shorty right here. Brothers, honor King Shorty. You know what I'm saying? And I know you like, what do King Shorty got to do with insanes? What do King Shorty got to do with the greens? What? All right, we talking about Don Smokey. We talking about insane gangsters. What do you know he got to do with anything? We talking about Cabrini Green. Well, I'm finna show you. Because King Shorty had a major effect on what I'm finna speak on. Real talk. I want to show y'all this right now. So, you see this right here? This is an article about King Shorty relative getting killed. You see, it's a boy, great uncle, his disciples. The nephew of King uh, Shorty. The great nephew a King Shorty got killed in Cabrini Green. Real talk. And after that, after that killing, a gang truce came about. Real talk. A gang truce came about. And I'm going to keep it real. It was after King Shorty great nephew got killed when the gang truce came about. Right? 
So that's why I'm trying to tell you, like, King Shorty had some power. Straight up. Yeah, he had some power. So you got the mayor elect or the, this woman running to be a mayor, man. You know what I'm saying? And she like, you know, understand. We, I'm finna get into the truth because I'm finna show y'all something. You know what I'm saying? So understand this lady, Jay Byrne, you know, she, I mean, look, she won the election. You know what I'm saying? In like 1979, right? But this lady was crazy. She really was. Like, she was really trying to eat off, you know, the blood, you know, the sweat and tears of the of people of Cabrini Green. Like, she really was. Like, straight up, she was. I mean, she lost her uh, second, you know, uh, election, you know, when it came down to her, it was her, Harold Washington, and somebody else. And, like, the Democrats picked, you know, like, everybody voted picked Harold Washington. And he went on, you know, to face uh, the Republican. And he won. One of the most visible signs of Chicago's struggles was its high-rise public housing. In the two short decades since they had gone up, the buildings had already fallen into disrepair. It's not the people's fault that the elevators don't run. Labor unions are getting rich off of public housing. Politicians are receiving contributions from the contractors and the labor unions. So everybody is shaking everybody else's hands and the people who come out on the bottom end are the residents themselves. A federal audit showed that Housing Authority Chairman Charles Swibel had been operating the agency as a vehicle for patronage for nearly 20 years. Swibel was a real estate developer and also Jane Byrne's top campaign fundraiser. They always just put up these hacks, these people who are not really interested in service, but were interested in power. Perhaps the most notorious of the Housing Authority's so-called vertical ghettos was Cabrini Green. In just the first three months of 1981, Cabrini saw nearly 50 shootings. My children have to go to school, and I will say I am afraid over here. The cops, of course, they didn't really care. You know, these are black kids killing black kids. You know, one less black kid. Just a stone's throw away was the posh Gold Coast apartment of Mayor Jane Byrne. She had a clear view of Cabrini from her 43rd floor window. She was coming home one Saturday, and she said to the driver, take me through Cabrini. So as they were driving through, there was a paddy wagon, and they were putting a girl into it. Um, she said, pull over and find out what that's all about. So they came back to the car, and they said um, the girl had been gang raped. She was 12. So Janie said, <laughs> Well, I'm moving in. A rundown apartment building in Chicago will soon be home to that city's mayor, Jane Byrne. The Cabrini complex is looking better than it has in years. The city working hard to clean it up before the mayor moves in. Hey, there's paint. All of a sudden, you've discovered paint. Rodent control. Where's all that been all this time? In March of 1981, Jane Byrne and her husband, Jay McMullen, moved into a fourth floor unit at Cabrini Green. Some residents are cynical about the mayor's motives. She's not really a resident. She's just someone that just moved in with a security, that's all. <laughs> but the thing is that in moving in, it just pointed up the inequalities of what was going on in Cabrini. The second grade teacher of the local public school had the children write letters to her. Dear Mayor Jane Byrne, you should not move in the project. It's too bad. You will get killed. The neighbors know at some point the mayor plans to move out of here, security and all. She was asked when that will be. When I think people think they can look out a window and not get shot. And then I turned it over to Jim. Many of Byrne's new neighbors did not welcome her presence. When the mayor held an Easter celebration for the community, people came out to vent their frustrations. 
The question now is whether the presence of a mayor can overcome the presence of poverty and the presence of random violence. During the mayor's time at Cabrini, elevators were fixed, trash pickup resumed, and violent crime subsided, even if just for a few weeks. What it did was to say things could be different. You know, if somebody cared, and they only cared when the mayor moves in. I think what she did was bold. Give her credit for bringing attention to a place that most people would rather look away from. So like I told you, she won one of her elections, but when she tried to run again, she didn't win. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody really voted for her like that. You got to understand that, you know, she went up in the greens. She had a lot of black people locked up so she can go up in the greens and, and, and sit up in there, you know, and, and you know, do her, her, her one, two. You feel me? Then you had the Republicans. They was coming at her because they said, hey, you up here paying gang members and gang leaders and they working for you and all this and that. Straight up. So she didn't win. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't want y'all to see that. <laughs> so back to the truces so the greens is the first place to hold an official gang truce i showed y'all the article when king shorty great nephew got killed in the greens and that sparked the truce real talk straight up look you see it say secret police raid falls flat Guns reportedly moved earlier. Like, the police was really trying to, you know, they didn't want no peace. Senkwe Selvi has a short walk to school every morning. But as Senkwe winds his way through the tall buildings of the Cabrini Green housing project, he faces more than most 10-year-olds do on their way to school. I got to, like, walk down the long way instead of walking the short way. Cause you never know, like, if somebody can shoot you with a bullet oh, and a bullet don't got no eye. I know this boy who got shot, who went to Jenna, two more boys, I think. Anthony Felton and Rosa Roosevelt. I don't know his last name, but Laquita Elwes got shot, too. It's, it's, it's like you got to be careful to walk to school in Cabrini Green. Last fall, Senkwe lost another classmate to a sniper's bullet. Seven-year-old Don Trail Davis was shot in the head as he walked hand-in-hand hand with his mother across the parking lot from his building to Jenner School. Senkwe's mother and other mothers at Cabrini now shudder when they send their children off to school. Yeah, I pray every morning, you know, before they get ready to go to school, that like we get on our knees and we pray. Don Trail was the third Jenner grade school student killed by gunfire this year. His death quickly became a symbol of the escalating urban violence that cities seem to be unable to control. Chicago Mayor Richard Daley. What we see is, unfortunately, the wanton violence, the whole total disregard of human life by gang and drug dealers. And it's almost to be declaring a war. That's where we are, really. They're declaring a war against the gang dealers and, and drug dealers and gang bangers in our city and our nation. We have to. We have a war here. We have to go after in the same way they go after innocent people. Daly and Chicago Housing Authority Chief Vince Lane vowed to take back Cabrini Green from the shooters, the snipers, and the gangs. One week after Don Trell Davis's death, the housing project was inundated with hundreds of police officers, city workers, and construction crews. Entrances to all buildings were secured and locked. Residents now have to walk through metal detectors and show IDs to get into previously unlocked buildings. Before, this building was open 24 hours, seven days a week. Anybody could come in here, drive up, walk up, walk off the uh, sidewalk, come in here, get in the elevator, do anything they wanted. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now it's more secure? That's the key. You have to have security. Controlling violence in public housing is a problem plaguing cities across the country. But a recent federal report called Chicago's crime problems the worst in the nation. The concentration of high-density high-rises plus well-organized gangs means gangs can virtually control the projects here. Sick of the killing and the drugs, many residents welcomed the new security measures. 
considering how how bad you know it's been over here, I, in a way I I kind of understand you know why you know why they got so many police over here and whatnot. You know, you know try to straighten out straight, straighten out things, straighten the buildings out, keep all the keep all the uh, trouble, keep all the drugs and stuff out. And when they all when the police all leave, do you think it will be different? Yeah. I think it will. I don't know how long it's. I don't know how long it's going to last, but hopefully it'll, it'll be it'll be uh, safe safe around here for a uh, pretty long time. There have been many efforts to curb the violence in the 70-acre Cabrini Green project that sits just to the west of Chicago's Gold Coast and only two miles from downtown. Mayor Jane Byrne moved into Cabrini Green in 1981 in an effort to focus attention on the security needs at the project. The latest effort is the biggest. The city will spend half a million dollars to seal off four buildings, conduct apartment-by-apartment apartment security sweeps in the remaining 30 buildings, and expand social services. Vince Lane told Cabrini residents this time they, too, must get involved. You all have had to duck and dodge bullets long enough. I don't want to go to any more funerals for babies. I don't want to go to any more funerals for anybody. Not when they're funerals because someone has been uh, killed in a violent manner. You all have to take advantage of the moment. Come out of your apartments, start working with each other with the organizations that service Cabrini and let's throw the bad guys out and some of those bad guys you know as well as I do are your friends and relatives on the street there was no doubt that the heat was on on the day of the security sweep 15 police officers went after these young men after a report that a gun had been found nearby the minute you leave here, you go straight over to that ID center and get processed, okay? If I see you again out here and you ain't got processed, I'm going to lock you up. When I got to get the lease out of the house. You need that. Some residents complained that the metal detectors and constant checks made them feel more like they were in prison than at home. I think it's kind of being overdone, you know. I mean, it's, it's all well and done, but they secure the building and search the vacant apartment. But, you know, it's ridiculous being searched going in and coming out. How many times have you been searched today? About four times. Just try to walk with my mother while she's getting her identification and just try to get in the building and get something to eat for lunch. You know, it's just ridiculous. And I know I couldn't slip that in now that quick. <laughs> you can't even go in your own building without perhaps showing the oh, ID and somebody coming Kinda to like you in. like you're in South in. Africa somewhere, ain't it? Like you're in a concentration camp, ain't it? Community activist Marion Stamps has been working with Cabrini's children for over 20 years. She says the new security measures are not the way to go. You have to see the police in, in three and four buses and, and all the cars. I mean, the buses look like tanks, right? They came in our community like they was going to Desert Storm. That's no way to treat us. They treating us like everybody in this community killed that baby. And that's no way to treat us. The crackdown has brought complaints. The American Civil Liberties Union has sued the Housing Authority, saying security sweeps violate tenants' rights to be free from unreasonable search and seizure and their right to privacy. But police official Sherwood Williams, who heads up the division charged with securing Cabrini, says the ACLU lawsuit prevents police from being as effective as they could be. Police can't go into these occupied apartments and search. That'd be a violation of the rights. Uh, even with the emergency inspections conducted by CHA management team, they only can take, make a cursory type of uh, observations in the apartments. So if I'm a gangbanger and I know the police's hands is tied as far as coming in occupied apartments and so forth, 
We can take them guns and hide them in uh, drawers and closets and so forth. These are the young men who are the targets of the massive effort by the police and the housing authority. But now even the gang leaders say the killing must stop. These men of the Cobra Nation were out putting up flyers calling for an end to the drugs and the guns. They say even before Dontrell Davis's death, gang leaders had come together and called for a truce. Dave Mack says after burying four brothers, he knew it was time to stop. It was destroying. Uh, I mean, you can look at the crime. It was black killing black. I'm telling you, if you, if you really look at it, you know I'm saying it wasn't no white person coming over here killing us. You know I'm saying it was, we was killing our own people, and, and, and it's time to stop. You know what I'm saying? How did you get people together who had been shooting each other? You know, it, it was just, you know, but it was just time for the unite. You know what I'm saying? They wanted to call the Dan Trail. You know, cause this this something that put the focus. We realized that we were destroying our nationality from our future youth. You know, we want to get at to them because we put it though. You know, the young brothers and sisters growing up, you know, deserve to, you know, to have more than what we had. And that's you know, we're trying to get this to them. Crime has dropped at Cabrini Green since Dontrell Davis's death. There were no murders and only two shootings in the three weeks after the security sweeps began. The head of the Chicago Police Department, Matthew Rodriguez, says it is more likely that it was the new security measures, not a gang truce, that calmed the project. If they choose to, to take credit for that, uh, that's up to the gangs. Uh, uh, my uh, evaluation of a truce would, would be uh, uh, quite a distance in the future. And uh, basically, uh, you know, I don't uh, put a whole lot of stock in, in it. Uh, at the same time, uh, in this city, uh, back in the 1920s, we saw other criminal, organized criminal activity, other criminal gangs who also uh, purportedly entered into truces and the truce never uh, never seemed to be long-standing so uh, based on history there is nothing for me to take uh, a great comfort from no matter what has made the difference security efforts or a gang truce Sanque Selvi says it is not quite as scary to walk to school now but Sanque and his classmates like most everyone at Cabrini wonder if it will last I think it'll get better like if they like like they have police on the street 24 hours a day, like, like they see any gang members walking down the street, they can like tell them to go somewhere else. If they don't, they can arrest them. I don't think this neighborhood is going to get better. I think afterwards, when they get finished with the buildings and everything, fix them around, getting all the cocaine and drug pushers out, it's going to be the same way again and that people are going to start doing it over again. And then, and then the p people, the police and everything are not going to do nothing about it. They're just going to keep letting it happen. And this neighborhood is going to stay the same. The effort to make life safer for Cabrini's children has been massive. But poverty is still the basic intractable problem here. The shooting at Cabrini may have stopped for the moment. But at home, Sanque Salvi must still deal with a bleak, roach-infested apartment. There is little furniture, few clothes, no books. Afraid of the violence outside, his 28-year-old mother rarely leaves her apartment. The television is her main contact with the outside world. Vince Lane says children like Sanque Salvi may survive here, but they will not thrive unless basic changes are made in public housing. As long as we sit here with 90% of residents on welfare huddled in these tiny boundaries, we're going to have, we're going to have problems. Solving those basic structural problems will take a lot longer than installing metal detectors and running it's security sweeps. But Vince Lane says Chicago has begun to try. He says the legacy of Dontrell Davis demands no less. So you hear the police, like, you know, uh, before I was showing y'all the video, like, you seen how the, you know, that article was saying, like, the police don't want no peace. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, they can't even comprehend that, you know, brothers can come together and stop the violence in their community. 
like real talk. They like, oh, y'all stop the violence in the community. We ain't got no job type stuff. You feel me? That's sad. But this brother right here, I'm showing y'all is Noonie Ward. And Noonie Ward is a pillar in my community. You know, this brother, since I was a shorty, you know, like, he been doing phenomenal things in the community. You know what I'm saying? Like, real talk. You know, uh, he ran for alderman. You know, he uh, stopping the violence. I'm finna show y'all. Because this brother right here, like I told you, the Greens kicked off that that truce. And when that Dontrell Davis situation happened, rest in peace to the little brother. But when that happened, the truce started and it sparked a lot of truces throughout the city. Real talk. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you down the line, you know, how King Shorty and Larry Hoover was trying to stop the the drama and the beef and the violence in the hood. Real talk. But you see what this say, Harold Nooney Ward gestures broadly, arms extended toward a cluster of simple row houses. You know, Ward, a high-ranking member of the Gangster Disciples, is standing a few yards from his four door Mercedes Benz, feet planted firmly in the rival Vice Lord territory. This is what Ward say. I ain't supposed to be here. He say smiling. Gold chain glistening in the sun. This is not a demonstration of bravado. He says it's an example of how a gang truce has changed people's lives in the Argyle Garden public housing complex. Real talk. I mean, look, in the report it's saying that even the police saying, hey, the gang shootings going down, the shootings going down in the community. Nooney Ward saying, hey, I'm a GD and I'm standing right next to my Mercedes and I'm in a vice lord territory. If the gang truce wasn't possible, I wouldn't be able to stand here. And I'm just showing y'all that the shootings went down because of the truce. This the newspaper reporting it. The shooting, the shootings in Argyle Gardens went down. Real talk. Straight up, it be cracking in the gardens. Been cracking in the gardens. But it was a peace treaty that was called. And brothers got with the program. And that was in the hundreds. I showed you a peace treaty, a peace treaty in Cabrini Green. Now we finna go to Inglewood. But I want you to see what this say. Say Baskin with the support of Hoover and Black Disciple leader Jerome Freeman arranged for older members of those two organizations to mediate gang disputes inside Inglewood Prep. And he offers the program as proof of Hoover's sincerity, meaning Hey, Larry Hoover want to change the dynamics in the community, stop the violence. You already see what it says, you know, King Shorty, he was with it too. Understand what, what I'm showing y'all, real talk. Say like gang members police they own at school, at school's invitation. Gangster disciples and black disciples as hall monitors, both in the hall monitoring the students who are gang members attending the school. Real talk. Now, I'm just showing y'all these are the rules that they was coming up with. It say like to keep peace in the school and motivate gang members in class. Inglewood Technical Preparatory Academy has brought in representatives of the neighborhood dominant gangs. It looked like the GDs and BDs came up with they, you know, like different, uh, you know, things they wanted to list. So, like, you got no monitoring. Monitor is to flash gang signs at any time in school. Come to school on time every day. You know what I'm saying? May, maintain the C plus, you know, get A's. You know, like, different rules they get. You feel me? So, I'm showing y'all an article that's speaking about the decrease of killing in Inglewood. Real talk. Inglewood, south side of Chicago, 
is a notorious neighborhood. But I'm showing y'all right now that all the truces that went down because of what happened in Cabrini Green. Real talk. Now check this out. <laughs> forget to go subscribe like share real talk flaco santana tv and flaco santana tv too make sure y'all go subscribe share so i just showed y'all you know the greens coming down like real talk they told the greens down and you know moved everybody around you still get like uh, I want to say you still got the row houses up, straight up. Last time I went, the row houses was up, but uh, I'm just showing y'all like, you know, the, the greens coming down, straight up, real talk. Like I say, legends there, good stories, you know, uh, insane started there. Is is really crazy to see them come down straight up I'm from the hundreds but my people from the greens facts and maybe one day I'll tell their story straight up I might I might tell their story about the things they went through you know I said my cousins and them up in the greens and everything like that having shootouts and all type of shit straight up real talk but that might be another time. So, with that being said, understand that Insane's wasn't just in the Greens. They was, like I told you, Don Bojan. You know, he went to 22nd Street, the Ickies, to them projects. And the bros down there tapped in with the Insane concept. And like I said, it wasn't that brothers was going against the Greens. When they was saying, hey, we insane. You feel me? They just saying, hey, we insane about this G thing. You feel me? Real talk. You know what I'm saying? That's all. You know, that, nothing more, nothing less. You know what I'm saying? At, at that time, I, I really can uh, say they was, like I say, uh, BGD. Until the new concept came into play. And that's where things kind of got you know what I'm saying, where the misunderstandings came about, you feel me, and we're going to get into that, but I'm showing y'all right here a picture of a brother named Insane and Tino, Tino then passed away, but Insane and Tino came in contact at a young age, they were like 14, 15, I, actually I want to say Insane was 13, but 13, 14, you know what I'm saying, young brothers, they came in contact with a brother named Fo Two. Fo Two was from the Greens, and he just got out of out of prison. Real talk. But when he he came around and you know met these young brothers, he was pushing insane. You feel me? Real talk. Now at that point, you know what I'm saying? It was a brother named Killer Ed, and Killer Ed brought a lot of brothers together. You know what I'm saying? Real talk in the Inglewood area, things like that. Like I said, this brother Insane and, and Tino and them, they from like 67 and Damon. You feel me? So you had Killer Egg 
to kill an egg. It was a lot of different uh, clicks and things like that. Everybody rapping what they rapping, but, you know, brothers was saying what they were saying. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm this, I'm that. You know, so you had Insanes. You had uh, Maniacs. See, uh, it was a brother named Don Little Rob. He was over the Maniacs. Real talk. You know, do your homework, do your research. You know what I'm saying? And you had Don Wolf. You know what I'm saying? And you had a lot of a lot of Dons. You know what I'm saying? They a Don Twin. You know what I'm saying? You had a lot of Dons. Like, straight up. You know? Look, Don Jew, baby. Don Smoke. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm showing y'all how, like, Dons are the highest, you know, title a brother can have. So, you had a lot of different Dons or different areas and different hoods and things of that nature. And, and Killer Ed, when he got out, he brought everything together. You know what I'm saying? So, understand that. So you might want to know what happened in four two. Well, four two, he got killed on Damon. Real talk. Want to say he got shot in the head on a uh, Damon at a gas station. Real talk. I say that. So uh, understand four two brought it from the greens. He got killed in that hood. You know. Uh, the brothers he got in tune with, the little brothers, like I told you, uh, Insane and Tino, rest in peace to that brother, they carried it on. You feel me? Straight up. <laughs> so, you know, shout out to them bros. I'm just showing y'all, you know, how Insane's, these are different, you know, stories of how Insane came to the South Side. Real talk. Straight up. Now I'm finna show y'all, you know, a brother, you know, who y'all might seen before in the Larry Hoover documentary. His name is Junkyard Dog Junk. Real talk. And he is from Insane City, 64th and Seeley. Rest in peace to the brother. Cheers, cause where you stand? You VD if you stay in the VD neighborhood. You GD if you stay in the GD neighborhood. You MC if you stay in the MC neighborhood. Wherever you stay at, that's what you So that's junk right there. Junkyard dog. That's folks right there. Rest in peace to that brother. He was an outstanding brother. These some of the original insanes. You see the brother throwing up the eye right there. You know what I'm saying? Big eye. You see how he coming. You know what I'm saying? They the insanes from Insane City. 64th and Sealy. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. Like I told you, like, insane spread throughout the city. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. It just wasn't in the greens no more. You know, it spread to the Ickies. It spread to Inglewood. Heavy in Inglewood. You know what I'm saying? Like, real talk. You know, around that area, heavy. In the hundreds. You know, at a point in time, it was heavy. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. It was. But, like I say... Uh, Insane City, you know, that brother Junk uh, did some spectacular, outstanding things for his uh, community. You know, he was trying to better, you know, uh, the community at the end of the day. He ran for state representative. A lot of people might not know that, but he ran for state representative. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. So that's why I'll be trying to tell you, you know, the concept of Insane is not, you know, doing something wild or just, you know, going against the grain. No, it's, it's just saying, hey, I'm insane about, you know, this thing. You know what I'm saying? It ain't about being negative, how people try to portray it. You know what I'm saying? Like, real talk. You got brothers who insane, who doing positive things. Like, real talk really changes the dynamics in the community. Like I just told you, this brother wasn't insane. One of the original insanes in his hood. And he was going to be the state representative. One day, I might do a documentary on uh, Junk. Real talk, because he definitely deserved it. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of, I'm going to just do 
a documentary about him, but just talk about, you know, them brothers in that area. Because you had some brothers over there, that's Inglewood, you had some brothers over there who was pushing that insane, you know, uh, line. Richie Rich, Lil Hayes, uh, Jimmy, you feel me? You had a lot of bros who was pushing that over there. Straight up. You know, you got brothers in the 70s over there, 71st, 72nd, you know what I'm saying? All through there. Like, I showed y'all pictures of, you know, uh, Lil Dirk dead, Big Dirk. You know what I'm saying? And the brothers in the picture throwing up the eye. Three different brothers, you feel me? Straight up. So I understand that. But in the hundreds, you know, there was the insanes, you know, insanes, you know, been deep at a point in time, real deep. You know what I'm saying? In fact, uh, in Statesville, it was so many insanes. It was like 300 insanes up in there. It was so many insanes at a point in time in Statesville that a memo got put out about no clicking. You know what I'm saying? Not the before the G, after the D. Y'all might heard of this before. Real talk. You know, and then I'm going to give y'all two different scenarios. You know what I'm saying? One scenario is when that memo came out and discussions was had, you know, that brothers was told to, you know, hey, drop the eye. Right? That was one discussion that was, you know, said to be had. Because the memo came out, no clicking, no, nothing before the G, nothing after the D. So then, the other discussion right is I'm going to give you three because it said that when Smokey became a board member that he had to drop his eye to become a board member right so that's the second one then the third one is yeah, not to come before the G and after the D, but at the end of the day, y'all are who y'all are. Not saying don't be insane, but when it come down to the folks, when it come down to us, we all the guys at the end of the day. Nothing come before the G or after the D. Real talk. Straight up. So I'm just showing y'all pictures of, you know, the, the guys and insane city while I'm building and just going through, you know, different things. You know, but these them them members, the originals, the original insanes off sixty fourth. Straight up. And like I said, it was important time. Yeah, the insanes was deep, but it, it wasn't a lot of insane sets. And still to this day in Chicago, it's still not a, a lot of insane sets. Original insane sets. I'm showing y'all what the insane say. Like real talk. I'm not showing y'all a you know like a million different hoods. If I could, I would, you know, to add to the history so y'all can understand about, you know, what insane come from, high spread and things of that nature. 
straight up. So I'm just showing y'all, you know. So then, uh, I just showed you the insanes from the Greens, the insanes from, you know, uh, Inglewood area, you know, around 56, uh, 64, 71st, 72nd. Now we get into the hundreds, my hood, my strip. This uh, shorty insane right here with one of the guys from out west. And I'm from one of the biggest sets of insanes in Chicago. The biggest set. Ten Trey, Hunter and Third, from Cottage Grove, past Halsty. Ten Trey Insane Gangster. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. I'm from down the hill. You know, these the guys right here. You know, rest up to the members. You know who in these pictures who ain't here no more. Freedom guys who ain't here no more. This park that you see them in, they're called Benny Park. And that's where everything started for us down the hill, Benny Park Gangsters. They started off, you know, uh, as maniacs, you know, and uh, the guys from up the hill, you know, they was insane. You know, up the hill, down the hill, down the hill, up the hill, we all won at the end of the day. So we all click up with each other. Maniac kind of faded out. Like, you know, like, insane is the thing that, you know, kept going in the hood. You know, Maniac, all them, like, the older bros, you know what I'm saying? They was before my time. But, like I said, it all started off Benny Park Gangster. You know, where you see uh, folks in them at, you know, uh, things of that nature. These the older folks, these the guys right here from where I'm from, 10 Trey. Real talk, like I said, you got uh, maniacs, you got insane, you got up the hill, down the hill. Some of the picture people in this picture is from down the hill, and some of these uh, guys in the picture from up the hill. That's why I keep telling you, like, we all ten tray, we all ten tray gangsters at the end of the day, straight up. So I just gotta give y'all a little history of where I'm from. Like I say, the biggest insane set in Chicago, from 130 Cottage to 130 Halstead, 10 Trey Gangster, past that. Real talk. You go on the train, you're going to find some insane, 10 Trey Insane Gangster. But this is uh, the older folks. These the older guys. Personally know all of them. You know what I'm saying? They started a group called The Government. Real talk. The majority of us, we from the other side of King Drive. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, it's all 10 Trey, though. Real talk. They had a rap group. You know what I'm saying? They were doing their thing. And I'm going to drop a, a documentary on them as well. But you see me up in here with my brothers. These are my brothers. These are all my brothers right here. And y'all see them. These are my brothers. Straight up, I think it, it's one, and one BD in this picture, you know what I'm saying, but that's our brother though, you know what I'm saying, real talk. So I'm just showing y'all, 10 Trey, insane gangster, I'm letting, you know, let y'all see it for y'all self. You got Kool-Aid, you got Ren. You got Chubb, and you got Big Snooty, Big Snooty, Big Snooty gone, rest in peace, but you can see Chubb and Snooty look like twins, boy, and Ren, folks always be rapping, he do the rapping like heavy duty, like real talk, straight up, and free uh, Kool-Aid, Real talk, free folks. So, I'm finna get into, you know, these myths right quick. Because there's a lot of myths out here. You know what I'm saying? About insane gangsters and things of that nature. Right here. That was, and I'm clearing it up because it's disrespectful at the end of the day. You know, uh, right here it says Solomon created IGD after David's death. It was created to have a set dedicated to extracting vengeance for King for David's death. 
and also to police the other sets. Uh, that's not true. Solomon, I don't know who made this made up character, but no. Nah. You know, there, there's some made up stuff, man. And I, you know, there's some brothers, you know, who, who out there just claiming something that don't claim them. You know, looking on the internet, getting all this stuff. Look at this. Talk about who was that one day with King David was talking about the different natures of men and women when Sheba came walking up with her panther. Come on, man. What is they talking about? A uh, uh, black panther. Hoover walking up with a black panther. He from Inglewood. Ain't no black panther thing. Inglewood, other than the uh. <laughs> Oh, uh, Fred Hampton Jr. What are you talking about? And Queen Sheba was raped and went to Solomon and told Solomon that two vice lords defiled her. Solomon went to David and told David what happened. David went out in a rage knowing that the vice lords hung outside of the donut shop. Solomon tried to stop him, but David told him to go get Hoover. Solomon went and searched for Hoover for 45 minutes. Solomon found Hoover and explained... Look, man, this this is just all made up. All of us made up, and brothers who going by this stuff, you made up, like, at the end of the day. You know, it's a lot of people out there who be claiming they insane and things of that nature. Like, we don't know you, you know what I'm saying? Like, with, like we not connected in any type of way. Like, I just showed you, like, in Chicago, it's only, like, four, five sets of insane, and we all know each other. Real talk, and it's not no white boys. It's not white boys, you know. I ain't racist or nothing. I'm just, you know, keeping it real. I got white brothers who GD, but as far as like the insane thing like that, like that's something totally different that I think brothers that came up with, like for real. Because they talk about yellow brick roads when you talk to them, they talk about, you know. King Solomon, Queen Sheba, all that stuff is made up. All is made up, and it's disrespectful toward the real founders, Don Smokey and Don Bojan. Real talk. I don't know who came up with this concept of uh, uh, these these uh, white guys out here running around saying they IGD and like they not even representing what we represent and they not even like it like I say brothers be lost brothers brothers be lost man you know and I ain't saying this to say hey you know y'all not passionate in what you you know believe in but what I'm saying is that you know you kicking a lot of uh poor knowledge you know you got poor knowledge you got a, a poor you know a misunderstanding at the end of the day So right here is where Don Smokey got killed at. You know, I'm not showing you the exact, you know, house, you know, real talk. Out of respect of the person that stayed there, you can look it up. I mean, it's on his block, you know, real talk. But the way the story go, that was in a newspaper article, was that a white uh, truck, like Escalade or something, pulled up Don Smokey was out there, two individuals jumped out. One individual walked with him, like around right here where I'm showing y'all, walking around the corner and went to that alley right there that I showed you. So when he went to the alley and he was talking to the brother, when he walked back, that when he got shot four times in the head. I'm not sure, but over here by 71st and Euclid, there's red tape up and police presence. Red tape, police car, um, not sure what happened, but this is 71st and Euclid, over by Italian Fiesta Pizza.
definitely red tape up. So I just showed y'all, you know, the angle from like Google Map. Then I just showed y'all uh, another angle, you know, from somebody recording, you know, somebody getting killed on that same block right there. You know, Don Smokey was the last done. Rest in peace to him. Straight up. Rest in peace to him. You know, uh, Don Smokey was real. He he was a real individual. Like I say, he was a gangster of gangsters. You see it say right here, North Side of Chicago. You know, Crown Boss and OG, Ernest Don Smokey. Don the Dons, Wilson. He was the leader of the Northside GDs and longtime shot caller in the Cabrini Green Homes. He was also the founder of Insane Gangsters Faction. He was killed in 2018 at 65. So Don Smokey was an older brother when he got killed. You know, he was an older brother, 65 years old when he got killed. You know, Don Smokey was a gangster, but I also know that he was, you know, trying to change the dynamics, you know, trying to get brothers to grow and develop themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like real talk. Because I know he definitely told me that personally. People gonna say a lot of things about the dying. You know, he was ruthless. He was shysty. You know, like I said, he was a gangster of gangsters. You know, like folks didn't play. You know, like real talk. There's a lot of things people gonna say about Don Smokey. Some good, some bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, the stories about Don Smokey, I have even, you know, spoke on, you know, so many different stories, you know, about this brother because, you know, at the end of the day, it ain't about that. You know what I'm saying? And it, it ain't about that. I just wanted people to understand, you know, exactly where Insane came from, you know, real talk. And, and and know, you know, the history. So right here it say, Anthony Dobbins of Troy, Illinois, and Warren Griffin carried out a second killing, taking out rival gang board member Ernest Don Smokey Wilson in Chicago because he opposed their status as board members. Dobbins was arrested in August 2018 in his home where authorities found heroin, crack, cocaine, gang literature, and weapons. He pled guilty to racketeering conspiracy January 17th, admitting that he shot Wilson four times. He has not yet been sentenced in the case. So, you see right there, you know, the brothers who killed Don Smokey, I mean, they already been convicted. It was two of them. They've been convicted. You know, uh, I want to say like they got life sentences, you know what I'm saying? Like real talk. And like the way the story go, and it, I mean, they broke it down in the paper. I should put the article in here on how they broke it down. But basically, like they pulled up, uh, wanted to talk to Smokey. One of them, like put on a uh, walk with Smokey in the alley. They came out the alley, walked up the block. The other one was, like, standing by the car while they was, you know, talking. And while they was talking, dude ran up behind him and shot him in the head. You know what I'm saying? And killed him. Straight up. I mean, this actual, you know, actual fact. You can research it. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, I should put the uh, little... Snip it up in there, man. Real talk, but 
you know, Don Smokey, the founder of Insane Gangsters, you know what I'm saying, got killed, you know what I'm saying, he didn't, he didn't get killed by no opposition, he didn't get killed by, you know, nothing like that, he got killed by a GD, straight up, you see it, say it, say it up in the paper, July 12, 1952, he was born. May 18th, 2018, he died. Real talk. There's a picture of Smokey. You know, and... It definitely rest in peace to the brother. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to him. Rest in peace to Don Bojan. Rest in peace to all the guys, you know, that I showed in this documentary that I ain't here no more. I'm doing it for y'all. I'm doing it for them. I'm telling a story. You feel me? Straight up. This Don Smokey funeral. In fact... Rest in peace to Gino. He from the hundreds. I love that brother right there. Real talk. Rest in peace to Gino. You see Speedy right there. He was a boy member. You see Gov. Man, I love Gov so much. Real talk. Taught me so much. Gave, gave me the blessings. Real talk. That man right there gave me the blessings. Rest in peace, Gov. Rest in peace, Speedy. Rest in peace, Gino. Straight up. They had Don Smokey uh, funeral. Straight up. Look at the bros. Look at U.S. in the cut. Real talk. Look at U.S. Look at the guys. Rest in peace, Speedy, man. Straight up. Speedy was from 95th Street. U.S. from 95th Street, and I'm going to get into their history. I'm going to get into their history. But look how many people show love to Smokey. Look how many people came out and embraced Smokey. Real talk. So that's why I say, you know, Smokey, you're going to hear all type of stories about Smokey. The good, the bad, the ugly. You're going to hear the real. But he still had an impact. He still was somebody. He still was important. Real talk. And it's showing through these pictures. I'm showing y'all right now. You got all these brothers up in these pictures. I even see Ike Taylor up in here. I see Ike in there. One of my bros, Rashawn, up in there. And see Ike. <coughs> I didn't go into the history of uh, a situation that happened in Inglewood where uh, Ike had to come and delegate the situation. Straight up. It was a point in time Ike was the co chairman. You know, he, you know, I said that point in time. He's not no more. You know, and honestly, I'm gonna interview him and we're gonna get to the bottom of some things because some people say that he was in bad graces, you know what I'm saying? And that's why he not the that uh he wasn't the co chairman no more, you know. But I can speak for itself, you know, at the end of the day. And on Flacco Santana TV, we're going to get down to the bottom of what's really good at the end of the day. You know, but y'all see, look, all the people that came out. Rest in peace, Don Smokey. Don the Dons. The last Don. Real talk. 
do you know I talked to him before he died, a week before he died? He said, Flacco, I know who you are. Keep doing what you're doing. He say, Flacco, I'm always going to be an insane gangster. But I'm an insane gangster about growth and development. Real talk. I'm going to say it again. He say, Flacco, I'm always going to be an insane gangster. But I'm an insane gangster about growth and development. Real talk. So understand that Don Smokey was about growth and development. If you seeing you insane, you supposed to be on growth and development time. Better in your community. Better in yourself. Real talk. Helping your brothers and sisters grow in your community. Creating generational wealth amongst your people, amongst your family. Circulating that dollar, not an illegal dollar, but a positive and righteous dollar amongst your people. Opening up businesses, brothers and sisters getting trades. Not gang banging, throwing up signs. You know what I'm saying? Helping an oppressor by going to jail every day or in and out of jail. and That's not the vision, that's not the business. Straight up. So understand that. Don Smokey was an insane gangster about growth and development. And that's a fact. Because that's the last thing he told me. Out his mouth. He didn't say nothing about no dropping no eye. He didn't ever say, hey, we ain't insane no more. He said, Flacco. I'm an insane gangster, always going to be an insane gangster about growth and development. Rest up, Don Smokey. So you might ask, hey, Flacco, you done showed us what happened to Smokey, Don Smokey. You done showed us what happened to Big Chuck, you know, Cabrini Green Legends, you know, Insanes. What about Don Bojan? Well, Don Bojan, the one who brought all the insanes together, who was the face for the insanes, he got killed by a 16-year-old and his auntie. The nephew and the auntie killed Don Bojan. It killed. It was two individuals, actually. It was, like I said, a double slam. You know, say, uh, Don Bojan was 28 a reputed leader of the Black Gangster Disciples. Now, mind you, like I said, it was Black Insane Gangster Disciples. You know what I'm saying? But it's like him and his friend, Derek Montgomery, 25, you know, they they got killed. And in a uh, photo that the police took, it's like he was wearing a gold star over his heart, which authority said was signifying his leadership of the gang. You feel me? So I'm just showing y'all, you know, what happened. Say so it was some smoke. And he came up in there, you know, dude come up in there with that uh sawed out shotgun. And and the auntie told you know, uh, her nephew to kill, kill them all. So rest in peace, Bojan. Real talk, dying Bojan. Rest in peace to dying Bojan. Straight up, rest in peace. This right here I'm finna show y'all right here is of Big Gus. Remember I was talking about Big Gus and he was like the godfather. He not dead or nothing, or nothing like that, you know, but... You know, I found this clipping of uh, him, and it say, you know, uh, this was when he was 33 years old. You know, a uh, reputed gang chief get hearing delay. and saying, hey, he's a reputed gang leader, 
for the black gangster to fight if it was in Cabrini Green. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. So I'm just, just showing y'all little little history. So I'm going to lighten this up. Uh, this right here, you see Jesse White. Jesse White, you ever heard of Jesse White Tumblers? Well, yeah, you know, that what he did. He had the tumble teams, you know what I'm saying? He taught uh, gym up in the schools, real talk. On the north side, he taught he taught uh, gym straight up. And the blood, the brother right there, the dark brother, that's Don Smokey's best friend, Dice. Real talk, straight up. Dice, dicey. Yeah, straight up. And he went and did some phenomenal things too. And I might have to get into his story. And it ain't even no, nothing negative, all positive. So I appreciate y'all. Tap in next time, Flacco Santana TV.